Support for the leadoff on WGLT and WGLT.org comes from the Central Illinois Regional Airport, where travelers are one stop away from world destinations. Connections on American Airlines to Chicago or to Dallas-Fort Worth are available daily. Close, convenient, CIRA. More at CIRA.com. Some ISU faculty are raising concerns about how the administration has handled safety threats. That's one of the things you need to know to start your day for Friday, May 17th. I'm Lauren Warnicke, and this is WGLT's The Lead Off. In the era of swatting, doxing, and surveillance, let's lead off with practices and policies at Illinois State University, which struggle to keep up with modern threats and disruptions. WGLT's Charlie Schlenker reports. In February, three masked people entered a gender studies classroom at ISU and began videotaping without permission. University police deemed the event a prank, But Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies Director Allison Bailey says students and faculty were freaked out. When the word got out, I was getting a lot of uh, calls, emails, and texts from my faculty members who were concerned that this might be have been a targeted attack. The fear may be justified. Incidents on college campuses tend to target professors from marginalized groups and those teaching hot-button topics. Bailey went to her dean and the provost. All say the current student code of conduct does not provide a strong roadmap to respond to disruptive or violent behavior. It has a huge impact on the the health and the well-being of our faculty. And when the university doesn't step up and at least say something like, this is what happened, you have an all clear, then faculty are left in this uh, liminal space where they don't know what's going on and they can only assume the worst. Provost Ani Azedjian says discussions about campus safety are ongoing. Proposed solutions include de-escalation training for faculty and instruction on classroom behavior for first-year students. With reporting from Lauren Warnicke and Lindsay Jones, and for the leadoff, I'm Charlie Schlenker. Here are some other stories we're following in the WGLT newsroom. The District 87 school board has hired an architect and construction manager for its renovations to a building it purchased from State Farm. The building will be used to reduce its wait list for early childhood education. The ISU Board of Trustees meets tonight, and it's expected to approve increases in student fees and housing and dining rates. The increases would be about 3.5%. Two former boat store workers in DeWitt County have pled guilty to a multi-million dollar fraud scheme. Prosecutors say Jeffrey Gibbs of Farmer City and Kara Wilkie of Maroa defrauded boat owners and several banks through bogus loans. And Central Catholic High School has broken ground on facility improvements to Hunman Field. Field. That's paid for through the school's capital campaign that raised over $7 million. You can find more on these stories at WGLT.org. Government and economic leaders are pushing back against a plan to shut down the Logan Correctional Center and move it up north. WGLT's Lindsay Jones has more. In March, Governor J.B. Pritzker and the Department of Corrections announced a $900 million plan to rebuild two aging state prisons in poor conditions. The Stateville Correctional Center for Men in Crest Hill near Joliet and the Logan Correctional Center for Women outside of Lincoln. And while it wasn't initially spelled out in the governor's first announcement, the state eventually said it planned to rebuild the Logan Correctional Center near Stateville, essentially creating a multifunctional campus. Elected officials who represent Logan County and its seat, the city of Lincoln, say this announcement blindsided them. We learned of that announcement 24 hours before it was released. And that's not okay. Turner organized a virtual town hall featuring state and local leaders in Logan County who detailed how they're pushing back against the state's plan to move one of the last remaining institutions there outside of the county. Since 2000, the area has seen the closure of the state-run Lincoln Developmental Center and more recently the closures of Lincoln College and Lincoln Christian University. Republican State Representative Bill Howder called Logan Correctional's potential closure another blow. To us, it is, I mean, massive. And we, we, we see that the, you know, the hits that we've taken, um, starting with LDC and um, going on to, you know, Lincoln College, Lincoln Christian, and now, and now this. And while the most immediate impact would be felt in Logan County, where many of the prison's 454 employees live, 
County Board Chair Emily Davenport says the impact would actually be a regional one. This is um, something that is going to affect almost 20 other counties um, because that's where all of the employees from Logan live and 20 other counties surrounding us. Davenport says she's reached out to other board chairs for letters of support for keeping Logan Correctional where it currently is. It's worth noting that none of the elected officials or economic leaders who spoke at Wednesday's town hall dispute that the prison was in dire need of overdue repairs, if not a rebuild altogether. Here's State Representative Bill Howder again. To me, when you say we want to demolish and rebuild Logan Correctional Center, we all agree with that. I mean, that was something that uh, was obvious. The tension rises solely from the potential decision to move it out of the county. Back in April, the Department of Corrections said in a report that moving the women's prison to the Stateville campus would create better re-entry opportunities for released inmates and better recruiting opportunities for IDOC, which wrote in its report that the pool of employees in Will County was more diverse and better educated. That messaging is among the points that some state and local leaders are questioning, including Sally Turner. Stateville, they can't fill out their positions. They're the third least filled. Yeah. So that that doesn't hold water. That whatever they were trying to explain to say, well, they have a great talent pool there that we can expand on it. Um, that's that's not true. Logan County Board Chair Emily Davenport says the shift wouldn't be fair to the pre-existing pool of workers already employed at Logan Correctional. If the facility did move, so then would the workers. But the nearest facilities for those workers are up to 90 miles away. Many times, you know, uh, spouses have their own jobs. Kids are enrolled in schools. You know, families have planted roots in their community. They don't want to move. And these reasons are alone would make transferring to another facility really hard or impossible, not to mention costly, especially with the prices of gas right now. The union representing state employees, including correctional workers, has also critiqued the state's plan as presented, saying in a statement in March, the plan leaves unanswered questions. I'm Lindsay Jones. You can hear more on this story today at 5 on Sound Ideas and read much more about it at WGLT.org. And before we let you go, Miller Park Zoo is hosting Endangered Species Day this Sunday from 10 to 3. Zoo staff will explain what it means for an animal or plant to be on the endangered species list. There will also be a scavenger hunt and chalk art contest. That's it for today. I'm Lauren Warnicky. You can subscribe to The Lead Off on the NPR app or wherever you listen.